here to Family Day 2021 at Wrigley Field. Obviously, we know that you, the season ticket holders, are the lifeblood of the Chicago Cubs, so we wanted to open up the doors here to the Federal Landmark and let you inside and uh, just kick up a little dirt here and have a little fun. But first things first, uh, obviously, you know this gentleman right here, the president of baseball operations for the Chicago Cubs, Jed Hoyer, ladies and gentlemen. Consider this somewhat the State of the Union of the Chicago Cubs, and uh, we'll get this thing out of the way so everyone can get out here and have fun at the friendly confines. That's the main mission of the day, of course. But, Jed, we want to know, obviously, July 30th. That was the trade deadline. Things came, things went, and uh, when the dust settled, the team looked a little bit different. So all the moves that were made, why did you make them? Uh, well, first of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody here. Um, you guys are the lifeblood. Uh, as Cole said, uh, your support uh, means everything. You know, we're not we're not the Cubs. People aren't dying to see games in Wrigley Field if, if it's not for your energy. So thank you. Uh, and also, have the best time today. You know, I will say that you know, some of my best memories as a dad are taking my three boys out of the field, uh, usually in the off season, but sometimes when the team's on the road, you know, playing catch with them out there. Just, Sometimes just sitting there talking in the outfield. Uh, this place is really special. Um, I, I don't have to tell you guys that, but um, I've been to all the ballparks in, in, in baseball. There's nothing like this, and uh, there's no there's no uh, there's no place that it stirs the emotion like this. So enjoy yourself in the outfield, have fun, and uh, and really soak it in. Um, as to the question about July 30th, I mean I, I think. You know, I'm stating the obvious when I say that was, you know, incredibly emotional um, for me and for all of you guys. You know, I feel like this group, we were, you know, incredibly stubborn, um, you know, with this group. Uh, we, you know, we believed in this group so much. We, uh, you know, signed these guys. We traded for them. We drafted them. You know, we tried to keep them long term. I think we believed in what this group was, was going to be and was going to become. Um, I think when they, when they first came to the big leagues, we had so much success right away. Uh, when they were young, we kept thinking of what is this going to be like when they get into their prime, when they get into their early 30s. And then, you know, candidly, we, we sort of started having diminishing returns. You know, uh, 2018, uh, we had a really good season, um, but the offense did did struggle. You know, and uh, we ended up uh, trading for Daniel Murphy that season to, to, to bolster. Uh, the offense, but we fell short at the end and, and struggled to score uh, against Milwaukee and against Colorado. You know, 2019, you know, uh, obviously uh, we were a little better offensively down the stretch that year, but we had to trade for Nick Castellanos that year to, to bolster the offense, and we fell short in 2019. You know, last year we had the, the COVID uh, shortened season. We got off to an awesome start. Uh, super proud of our guys, you know, coming out of um, the quarantine and playing it as well as they did, but ultimately we struggled in the second half offensively a ton. Um, we weren't able to score runs uh, late in that season. We weren't able to score runs against the Marlins, and so that kind of led us to this last year where you know a lot of guys were, were pending free agents. And you know when, when I look at this season, um, again we, we we rolled back this group. We wanted them to have uh, a season together in their. You know, prime ages where they could really produce, and um, here we have we got off to a, a mediocre start, but May was unbelievable. We kind of rode a, a great bullpen for a while, and you know as late as June 24th we were in first place. But you know when we lost 11 in a row, when we lost nine games in the standings in that 11 days, uh, it became clear that you know we needed to figure out a way you know, to move forward in a different way. Um, and to be honest, it became it became clear to me. And to people I work with, that um, you know, our goal is to build the next great Cubs team, and that's something you're, we're going to talk about a lot. Um, you know, 2016 and the building of that group uh, will probably always be my, my best memory in baseball. I couldn't be more proud of even being a, a tiny part of that. Um, but it became clear after what we had experienced in you know 18, 19, 20, and then this year that the next great Cubs team, Cubs team that we build is going to look a little bit different. So we were aggressive. You know, we made those deals to try to you know, bolster the farm system, to try to bolster the organization, so that we could build, you know, get those building blocks uh, for what we see as the next great Cubs team. So, really difficult decisions, you know, really emotional because of our relationships, um, but ultimately, you know, given where we were going, we felt like it was the right thing to do, and, and sometimes, you know, the right things to do are, are hard.
So difficult and emotional decisions, no doubt about that. I think there were a few people in the Chicagoland area who had some sweaty eyes on July 30th, no doubt, when it comes to that situation. But, you know, Jed, you and I have talked about it. You said that being able to deal those guys away, you got baseball currency. Not only did you get prospects, but you freed up a whole lot of cash for the offseason. And we know that the CBA, and that goes down uh, December 1st. So things, they could look a little different. But when it comes to being able to rebuild and spend money, what's it going to look like for the future of the Chicago Cubs? Sure. You know, Theo talked about this a lot, and, and I've done the same thing. You know, there's two currencies in our game. There's financial currency, and then there's prospect currency. And you're only really a healthy organization if you have both. And I think when you look at where we were, you know, as we built this, we built it with a ton of young prospects, and we had a lot of available dollars. You know, as this group got, got older, as, as we kept putting log after log on the fire, trading prospects for, for this group, you know, as they got more expensive in arbitration, we got to a place where we, were, we had fewer prospects in the system because we traded a lot, and we had fewer available dollars because bringing back the same guys year after year is more expensive every year. So to me, the, the, the healthiest organizations have both, you know, they have dollars available and, you know, and they have prospect currency. And, and right now, I believe we're on the precipice of, of getting to a place where we have both. Um, I know I made headlines the other day. I said that, you know, we were going to be very active in free agency. Um, you know, listen. We have a lot of holes to fill on the on the on the team for next year. Um, a lot of those are going to come through external uh, acquisitions, whether those are trade acquisitions, whether those are free agents. You know, we know we have to do that. I think that the team is going to look uh, demonstrably different than it does now uh, on opening day next year. So, um, you know, we're going to spend money. We're going to be active in free agency. Uh, the one thing I would say uh, to kind of couch that is that you know, free agency. Um, it's a risky proposition. You have to be really careful and really thoughtful and, and make your moves intelligently. Um, you know, oftentimes players get to free agency when they're already on the, in the decline phases of their career. You know, the nature of our game is that players are less expensive in their 20s and more expensive in their 30s, and, and they're also on, on their decline when they're in their 30s. So um, we'll be active in trades, active in free agency, but I would just say that we're going to do it in the most thoughtful you know, intelligent uh, way we possibly can. But I do think that um, the team will look different next year, and I, and I think that we have a, a real chance to compete next year. Jed, when you say how the team will look different, a lot of people, well, they're, they're somewhat frightened when it comes to the rebuild, but this isn't really a rebuild. It's more so of a reload. How is this 2021 into 2022 season going to be different than 2014? Sure. You know, I think that when people see those trades, they, they think about um, – kind of where we were in 2012 and 13. And obviously we got here at the end of 2011. So I know there was a couple uh, poor years before that. And you know, one of the things that, one of the reasons we, we, we made the aggressive moves we did at the deadline was to try to you know, speed up that process. You know, by, by being able to make those trades and, and acquire all those prospects, we were able to sort of speed the process up. Um, but when I think about a rebuild, uh, you know, I, first of all, a strategy that you use, you come up with a strategy, you know, how can we create the next Cubs, great Cubs team? And I remember sitting there with Theo and trying to figure out our plan. Um, you can't necessarily run the same play over and over. You know, what we did in Boston wasn't going to work here. Um, and so I would just say, you know, when I look at the way that we rebuilt uh, in 2012 and 13, I, that playbook, I think, has been played out. I don't think that works anymore. Um, so I think this is going to look a lot different. Um, I think clearly you, you, you wouldn't sit here and like you know, offer up exactly our strategy and what we're going to do. Um, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer that if you stack one good decision, one uh, pure good baseball decision after another, if you do that over and over, you're going to be successful, whether that's in trade, in free agent signing, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know in, 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 dra in the draft. You know, if you make one good decision after another, you're going to wind up in a really good place really quickly. Um, I've told this story a bunch of times, but I'll tell it again. In 2013, it was sometime in, uh, in June of 2013, uh, I was in St. Louis with the team. Uh, I think the Cardinals had won the World Series in 11. I think they went to the LCS in 12, and they lost in the World Series in, in 13. And um, all my in-laws, all my families, you know, they, they, they're from St. Louis, and I usually have a, a big crowd with me when I'm there. Um, but it was a random, it was a day game before we left, and I was just sitting by myself, and I, I found myself looking at their team, and you know, frankly, looking at our team, and thinking, like, 
how in the world are we going to beat these guys anytime soon? You know, they had, you know, at that point, you know, they had Matt Carpenter and Matt Holiday, and you know, they had they had Wayne Wright, they had you know Tommy Pham, and you know they had Descalso. You kind of list all these. All these you know, Molina obviously was still there. You kind of you know you kind of go around the diamond, and they were this really mature, fully functioning team that was on this run where. I mean, their run then was similar to our run in, in, in 2015, 16, 17. And then I looked out at our group, and, I, and it looked nothing like that. I mean, we lost 96 games that year. Uh, at that point, our farm system was was just okay. We drafted Chris Bryant a few weeks before that, but you know, other than that, our farm system hadn't yet become like the, the juggernaut farm system it was. You know, 18 months later. And so anyway, I look out, and then. Two years later, like I guess two years and three months later, we beat them in the LCS. And our team looked completely different than it had in 2013. You know, we had, we had traded for Miguel Montero and signed David Ross, and, 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 and I guess in, in 15 we hadn't brought up Wilson yet. We had traded for Miggy, we signed David Ross. You know, Rizzo was the one guy, he was still our, our, uh, our first baseman. You know, we had Javi and Addison Russell in the middle infield. You know, Chris was our third baseman then. Uh, we traded for Dexter Fowler, um, and he was our center fielder. Um, and then we had, had obviously, we had uh, Solari come up to the big leagues. He was playing outfield. Uh, and the same with Schwarber. We drafted him a year after that. Uh, you know, Jake Arrieta, uh, we had yet to trade for Jake Arrieta when I was sitting there in that St. Louis suite. And he was obviously our, our ace. Uh, we had signed John Lester. Um, my point is, in two years and a few months, that team looked completely different and won 97 games and went to the LCS. And so I think sometimes when you look out on the field now, you know, you, you don't necessarily recognize the names. You don't potentially feel like those are the building blocks of, of the next great Cubs team. Um, I guess what I'd say is, number one, it happens quickly sometimes. And number two, that we built it last time by sort of stacking one good decision, one good trade, one good signing on top of another. And it, we built that up that way. And we had the available resources to go out and sign a guy like John Lester. Um, so that's what we plan to do again. You know, if, if we make those good decisions, um, the roster will, will, will look a lot different. I think some of the guys on the team now will, will have an impact, but the rest of the roster will turn over. Um, all these young guys will, will come up to the big leagues. And I think, like I said, uh, it happens fast. And um, I have no doubt in the world that we will uh, we'll do it again. Yeah, one good baseball decision pretty much piggybacks into another and lends credence to the statement, never on schedule, but always on time, like you said. And things, they can really change in a small two-year to three-year window. And you touched on the fact that all these season ticket holders, they're the reason why there's so much excitement in the friendly confines here each and every single day. So when you look ahead to 2022, where is your source of excitement, Chip? Uh, for me, I, I mean, listen, I love, I love building. And I think that, you know, we have... We have some really nice pieces that are that are, are coming to the big leagues, um, but I'm just excited, you know, to, to, to get this place, you know, rocking again. You know, that's been one thing. Candidly, I think our our, our crowds have been really good, uh, you know, given the, all the trades. But I know I know what it's like in this building when it's electric, and, and to me, that really is um, that's what gets me going. That's what that's what um, you know keeps us at work late. That's what keeps us going on the weekends and stuff. Is there's no place in baseball, like I said at the beginning, you know, I want to get back to the time when this, you know, the, felt like the place was going to fall down when Montero hit the home run in, in you know, in game one you know, against the Dodgers. And, and, and I wanted to get back to where you know, we're playing huge weekend series here in September. And, you know, you can't get a ticket unless you're a season ticket holder. And uh, you can't get a ticket and, and it's, it's electric. That's what this place should be. And uh, like I said, that's what uh, that's what gets me uh, excited, and uh, I know it's going to happen again really soon. Now, before we get you out of here, Jed, we take a look at the future of the Chicago Cubs when it comes to that currency, those minor leaguers that are making an impact down on the farm. Is there one thing you'd like to leave all these season ticket holders with, something they can hang their hat on? Sure. Um, but like I said, you know, I do think that um, those trades were you know, incredibly emotional, but I do think we, we brought back a ton of talent in all of these deals, and you know, sometimes it seems like guys are far away, um, but you know, having a really excellent farm system, I think we're, we're very excited about a, a number of the guys that we drafted, a number of the guys that we that we traded for. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna supplement that uh, with trades and free agency. Um, but like I said, you know, to me, 
to me, my whole, my focus, my job is about building the next great Cubs team. Um, the journey to me has always been, you know, what it's all about. Um, going back to my days in Boston, you know, we, we sort of built it up, got crushed in the playoffs in, in, 20, in 2003. It was incredibly emotional and came back and won it in 2004. Um, you know, when I, when I think about here, you know, we, we built this up. There was, you know, there were some, some struggles. We built it up. We got excited about those, those guys coming up through. Um, you get swept by the Mets. It's incredibly emotional. And then the next year we come back and win it. You know, the ups and downs are part of it. The, 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 the struggles are, are part of it. You know, if, uh, it, it's difficult. The reason that there's a trophy on that field is because it's hard to win. It's hard to build a team that wins a World Series. But ultimately, the struggles and the process to get there and the journey, and, and that's what this is about. So um, you know, come with us on that journey. We're going to get back there. And soon enough, there's going to be two trophies on that field, not just one. So thank you. So it's pretty much trust the process, and uh, sooner rather than later, we're going to see another commissioner's trophy perched right there on the diamond at the friendly confines. Jed Hoyer, president of baseball operations for the Chicago Cubs, appreciate the time, and thank you for all the future. Yeah, absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. And like we said, the currency when it comes to Major League Baseball, it lies in the farm system. So. For, for all you guys out there who are wondering what the Cubs may look like down the road, three years, who knows, maybe two years, like Jed said, those small windows, they do open up very quickly. Let's have a quick look at some of the young